the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Let us stand in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for today. Although it's evening, dear Lord, it's still the day that you have made, and we shall continue to rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we magnify your name, Lord, for you are a great God. You are a holy God. You are a righteous God. There is no other God beside you. They have hands, but they cannot touch. They have eyes, but they cannot see. They have lips, but they cannot speak. They have feet, but they cannot walk, dear Heavenly Father. And we thank you that you are God and God alone. We come together, dear God, to praise you, to magnify your word, your name, to hear a more sure word for in times like these, dear Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, dear Lord, that we come together this evening, dear Lord, to hear a more sure word in for times like these, dear Lord. We come, dear Lord, because we need you. We need you, Heavenly Father. We need your word. We need to be strengthened by your word. We need to be guided by your word, dear Lord. That's why we come, dear Lord, on one accord to lift up your name and to hear a word, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, we give you glory. We give you praise. We honor you, dear Heavenly Father, for you are the most high God, dear Lord. Praise is comely to you, dear Lord. And we open our lips to give you the praise and the honor and the glory because you deserve it, dear Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus, dear Lord, our true King, dear Lord, our Savior, dear Lord. He went out as a lamb and he's coming back as a roaring lion of Judah, dear Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray, pray, dear Lord, that we prepare ourselves, dear Lord, to know you, dear Lord, to lift you up, dear Lord, to do what is right, dear Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we give you glory. We thank you, Lord, for this time, dear Lord. For this perilous time that is going on, dear Lord, we need a worship word. We need a word of confidence. We need a word to strengthen us. We need a word to guide us, dear Heavenly Father. We need a word to lift us up, dear Heavenly Father. And you, dear Lord, are the true God. You are the only God. You are the righteous God. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the first and the last, Heavenly Father. And we thank you for this time, dear Lord. The God of many names, but one God. Heavenly Father, you are good. You are good. You are only you, dear Lord. You are excellent, dear Lord. And we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for the opportunity to come together, dear God. Praise tabernacle, dear Lord. Praise you, dear Lord. And we honor you, dear Lord. We thank you, dear Lord, to know that you, dear Lord, that we could rest on you. We could rest on every word that comes from your mouth, dear Heavenly Father. For, dear Lord, you have good for us and not bad, dear God. For a good future for us, dear Lord. And we're holding on to that word, dear Lord. Heavenly Father, as we go high heights and deeper depths in you, dear Lord. As we prepare each and every one of us for those you are sending, dear Lord. But dear Lord, it's all about souls, dear Lord. It's all about saving souls, dear Lord. It's all about your righteousness, dear Lord. It's not about the buildings, dear Lord, but it's about our hearts, dear Lord, and what we, you made us to do, dear Lord. Heavenly Father, prepare each and every one of us. Let our hearts and minds be open to hear what the preacher is going to preach tonight, dear Lord. What he's going to teach us, dear Lord. Each and ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Lips, dear Lord, to praise you and to honor you. Ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. That we could put our hands to the floor and not turn back, dear Lord. Being focused, dear Lord. Not looking back, but ever going forward, dear Lord. Rooted and grounded in you, dear God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy as we continue to worship you in spirit and in truth. For you are a God and you are spirit, dear Lord. And those who come must come in spirit and in truth. We thank you for the opportunity, dear Lord, to hear your word. We thank you for the opportunity to listen and to hear, to act upon your word, to do, dear Lord, to walk in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise for what you're going to do tonight, dear Lord. For how we came in, dear Lord, we're not going to leave the same way, dear Lord. More wisdom, dear God. More understanding, dear Lord. For your word is truth. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, for it's free, dear Lord, that we could come together, dear Lord. For there are those, dear Lord, who have to go underground, dear God, to preach your word. And, dear Lord, we could come in the open, dear Lord, with a bold spirit, dear Lord, to praise you, to hear you, dear Lord. And we thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise tonight. 
Thank you, Mother Gemma, for leading us in that time of intercession, that time of prayer. Why don't you just look at somebody and let them know it's good to see you here tonight. Look at somebody and tell them it's good to see you here tonight. Amen. It's another night that we have gathered together, amen, to study the word of the Lord, to go into the word so that our lives can be made the better. Amen. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. If you're behind the row that Mother um, Roden is on, I'm going to ask that you'll move up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to start. That means Yolanda and Hunter. and Y'all got to just move up one row if you don't mind. God bless you. We thank God for all those that are watching on our stream, those that are in our iChurch tonight that could not make it out to the house of the Lord. Let's thank God for them tonight. Amen. Those that are watching via YouTube, via Facebook, God's blessings be to you is our prayer tonight. Good to see everybody in the room, in the sanctuary tonight, those that are on their way. Amen. God's blessings be to you. Amen. We are live and in living color, aren't we? Y'all here tonight? I done said a whole phrase and y'all ain't said nothing back yet. Waiting on some talk back church tonight. I know Cheryl missed him, but I know the rest of y'all know how to talk back, don't you? You know, Cheryl is the one that roots us on as we say, I need a talk back church. Amen. But I know I got to talk back to people tonight. We're going to go right into the word. You know, Wednesday nights is to me is strictly word. I use this whole hour for word uh, to teach and to minister on the word of the Lord. Uh, so I, I call this the night where we sit and we learn and we're taught uh, and we can shout, we can rejoice as well. But I do want you to receive the word of the Lord tonight. Amen. We've keep. We got a lot of people that's uh, under the weather. Uh, it's a bug going around. I don't know who gave it to them. I don't know who did it. Uh, no, it was <laughs> who brought that bug back from Michigan? I don't know who done did it. But somebody done did it. But uh, we're praying for all those that are out tonight uh, under the weather uh, with sinus infections and things of that nature. That God will give them the strength to endure and persevere and to come out on the healing side. All right. Let's go to John chapter 13 tonight. We're starting a new subject series that we'll be teaching on for the next couple weeks. I pray that it is a blessing to you as it was to me in my time of meditation and seeking the Lord as it relates to what we were going to move into now that we came out of of uh, the culture, shifting the culture. Ask the Lord, where do we go from here? Oh, the live. Okay. You know, I like natural daylight. Y'all pray for me. I don't like dark places. Your mother, mother say she doesn't. Well, try to open that one right there. See. Oh, that one gets a glare. Okay, so we'll leave that one closed too. That one's open and that one's open. Okay, as long as I can look out and see that it's still daylight outside, I'm all right. You know, all right. And we got enough light shining in here right now. All right. So listen, I just ask everybody to move up. So, uh, so if if y'all can move up for me a little bit. I don't want anybody sitting behind the road of Yolanda. So wave your hand, Yolanda, so everybody in the church will know who Yolanda is. That's Yolanda, everybody. Everybody say hi, Yolanda. All right. All right. So tonight we're, we're moving into a new series subject. Uh, and it really is everything that we, we are teaching right now has a thread that's connecting one to another, each lesson. Uh, that we're teaching in our Bible studies has a connecting theme, a connecting thread. So, you know, we talked about the culture. We talked about uh, relating to people. We talked about uh, evangelizing and witnessing and sharing our faith. Come on up one row. Come on up one row. Come on up one row. Matter of fact, I want y'all to come on up to that third row. I got, I got some seats right here, right there. There you go, Brother Deacon Gene. Everybody say, hey, Deacon Gene. Amen, amen. Dara's coming on in, so we're going to find Dara's seat. Come on right, Dara, we got your seat. We got your seat right there, Dara. The whole row is yours, Dara. The whole row, you can shout the whole row tonight. Amen, bless you. Amen. And I just want everybody to sit up close so we won't be so far back. We build a strong connection when we sit together. Amen. 
All right, so uh, as I was saying, we've been t we were talking about evangelizing, witnessing, and things of that nature, and the uh, Holy Spirit began to speak to me about this subject, about building relationships, building relationships, uh, and that's what we're going to be talking about, building relationships and ending bad ones. Ending bad ones. Building and, and ending. Building relationships and ending the wrong ones. Okay, let's look at John chapter 13 as our, as our key scripture for tonight. And uh, there you find these words. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. I just want to uh, lock in. I want you to underline or highlight in your Bible that last clause. I believe that would be the B clause because it's 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 after it's it care well actually it's the C clause because it's after the second comma. So we will say the C clause. So having loved his own which were in the world. He loved them unto the end, which suggests to us that Jesus himself was a man of relationship. Do you agree? Jesus was relational. Jesus built relationships with not just the 12, not just as we learn the 72 but Jesus built relationships with all those that he came in contact with. Jesus understood the importance of relationship so that it will also aid him into fulfilling his life's purpose. Jesus, the text says that he loved them that were in the world, and not only did he just love them, but he loved them un unto the end, which suggests to us not only did Jesus build relationships or have relationships, but we must also understand that Jesus, my brothers and sisters, when he built relationships, he built them on one thing, love. He built them on love. So tonight when we, when we highlight or talk about or introduce the subject on building relationships, Jesus was not wishy-washy in the relationships he shared with those whom he came in contact with. Jesus was not flaky with the relation, in the relationships that he established with those that he surrounded himself with. Jesus was not hypocritical in those relationships that he had built and he established. Jesus wasn't one way today and another way tomorrow in the relationships that he built. And you know, I'm just calling off some of the traits that we see in some of the relationships we have because you know, just as well as I know, you got some wishy-washy friends. Come on, let's talk. Let's be real. You got some wishy-washy friends. You got some flaky friends. You got some friends that's one way in front of you and another way behind you. You got all types of friends. You, you engage in all types of relationships. But one thing that the Holy Spirit impressed upon me as I was preparing today, he says that if the church is going to grow, if the church is going to win souls, if the church is going to be evangelistic, then we must learn how to build strong relationships and in ones that don't mean us any good. So we have laws that ensure orders in cities and nations, laws of nature, laws of physics, laws of supply and demand. If something is law, that means it works every time. It works every time. The law of gravity. Anybody know what the law of gravity says? Law of gravity says some, what goes up must come down. So the breaking of laws carries consequences. Laws also govern the complex world of relationships. The first step towards building strong 
purposeful, healthy relationships is to know these laws and understand how to make them work for you and not against you. So I believe as we continuously work to improve our relationships, watch this, with Christ and one another, with Christ and one another, we must also work to improve our relationships with people. Okay? So the goal of the Christian, the goal in, in our Christian walk, is to be more like Christ. We are Christians, disciples, followers of Christ. So if we're followers of Christ, then Christ must be our premier example. We must follow in the pattern of Christ. So if Christ specialized in building relationships, then why should we flunk at it? We should be specialists as it relates to building relationships. Christ never met a stranger. If he walked up to somebody, next thing you know, he was in conversation with them. Even if they were not the same pedigree, even if they were not the same ethnicity, Christ interacted with all people and established relationships, was able in communication to bring down barriers to get people to open up and receive what he had to offer. Case in point, John chapter 4, Jesus meets the Samaritan woman at the well. They don't even supposed to be talking, but because Jesus understands how to build relationships, he he, he, he engages in conversation with a person that he not that he's not supposed to talk to. He engages in conversation and before you know it, he's ministering to this woman right at the well. Why? Because Jesus understood how to communicate and build relationships. One thing that we are not good at as we should, as good as we should be at, and that is building relationships. We fall out with more people than we fall in with. Y'all don't want to say nothing, but the truth of the matter is, they look. the world looks at Christians as being mean and not loving. It's tight, but it's right. But watch this. Jesus gave to us the keys to building strong relationships. He showed love for others by blessing and serving the poor, the sick, and the distressed. Take a walk with Jesus, if you will, for a moment because Jesus was ridiculed and criticized for interacting with people that the church folks said that he shouldn't. The Pharisees criticized and they ridiculed Jesus because he fellowshiped and he communicated and he had relationships with people like Zacchaeus. He had relationships with the tax collector by the name of Matthew. He had relationships with, with the poor. He had relationships with the publicans. Jesus built relationships with those that was ostracized by the church. And what we have become guilty, and don't get upset when I tell you this, but we have created our own country clubs where we only associate with people that are of like passion. We only so associate with people that are like us and we wonder why our witness and our evangelistic reach is so short. Might it be because we're like Christians on an island and we're only communicating with people that worship with us, people that go to church with us, people that share the same faith with us and we don't look to build relationships with those that have been ostracized by the church, ostracized by the community, ostracized by the family. We only want to communicate and hang out with people that look like us, walk like us, talk like us, share the same values as us, go to the same places with us, and we wonder why we're not establishing any new friends. Might it be because we have an island mentality? When we say invite somebody to church, you can't because you don't know nobody else. Everybody I know goes to church. That's a problem. I only talk to people that go to church. That's a problem. That means that you have a problem when it comes to building relationships. If you have not made any new friends in the last six months or the last year or the last five years, guess what? You're on an island. Gilligan's Island. 
So let's talk tonight. How many of you have made some new friends lately? Okay. Maxwell, Cheryl, okay, Althea, and Sister Marilyn, I, Sister Marilyn got on the face mask. Y'all know it's a bug if Sister Marilyn got on the face mask. Everybody need to wrap up. Good. If you made new friends, that's great. That's, that's great. Jesus did it by blessing and serving the poor, sick, and distressed. So if we're going to build relationships, let's look at how Jesus did it. He did it by blessing the poor and serving. He did it two ways. So the two ways we build relationships, that we even initiate relationships, the way we start a relationship is by blessing and serving. Somebody say blessing and serving. So all because Jesus understood the importance of relationship, all because Jesus understood the importance of relationships through the lens of purpose he uh, that means he understood that relationships was important to his purpose hear what I just said relationships Jesus looked at relationships much differently than we do Jesus looked at relationships through the lens of purpose relationships are purposeful write that down relationships are purposeful how do I know because when God first made man in Genesis he says it is not good that man be alone God initially when he created you and I, when he created man and female, he created us to have fellowship and to have a relationship, not just with him. I know you've been singing the song, long as I got King Jesus, long as I got King Jesus, don't need nobody else. Yes, you do. You need somebody else. You need somebody to interact with. You need somebody to talk with. We're made to be relational. He said, it's not good that man should be alone, so I'm going to make for him a help me. He told them to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. So therefore, God meant for humankind to increase in numbers so that we can interact and have relationship one with another. So if that is the purpose, if Jesus understands the, the importance of relationships through the lens of purpose, then you must know that in order for you to fulfill your life's purpose, you need somebody outside of yourself. So you can no longer walk around, and, and you probably, we've all said it at one time or another, out of ignorance, I don't need nobody. How many have ever said that? Let's be honest. I don't need nobody. I do it. I, 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 I could do it by myself. You probably can, but you won't get it done as quick. And you might not be effective and efficient at it either. The truth of the matter is you do need somebody. Tell somebody, I can't do it by myself. People that live by themselves don't live long. And I don't mean just living in your house. I mean people that literally have no social life. That's what I'm referring to. I don't mean you're single and living by yourself. No, that's not what I'm referring to. I'm referring, I got to be clear, because some of y'all are like, what? I live by myself. Pastor just gave me a death sentence. Oh, Jesus. No, that's not what I'm talking about those who have no social life you talk to nobody you're made to interact one with another 
So let me say this. If we're going to worship and fellowship together and make the gospel of Jesus Christ attractive to non-believers, I believe that healthy relationship building is important. So as a church, we must learn or be retaught how to build healthy relationships, not just so we can have good church, but so that we can fulfill our purposes. Because believe it or not, whether you want to accept the fact or not, there's somebody assigned to help you fulfill your life's purpose that you probably have not even met yet but you won't meet them if you mean them. You won't meet them if you're antisocial. You won't meet them if you just sit in the house by yourself all the time and watch TV and never go out the house. They got a name for people like that. They're scared to go out the house, scared to go out and be social because they think something's going to happen to them. I saw it the other day on Law and Order. What is it? See, I knew I, I knew I was on. I can't even pronounce it, but you said it. Say it one more time, loud. Agoraphobic. Agoraphobic. Scared to interact with people. That's a true thing. So watch this. Our relationships exist mainly amongst the Christian community. We are on a Christian island and we only associate with people who are affiliated with our faith, which places a challenge on our witness. It places a challenge on our future. Because if we are all the contribution, if, if we're all the, uh, if we're all the product of someone else's contribution and investment, if you never connect with anybody so they can pour into you, then you can never be all God desires for you to be. I tell people all the time, I am a product of the relationships I have. If you want to know who Sam Barry is, then you have to look at the relationships that Sam Barry has been involved in. Intimately and socially. I am a product. They have shaped me to make me who I am today. You are the product of an investment through a relationship. You become who you associate and interact with. Y'all listening to me tonight? Good. So first thing you need to do when we're building strong relationships, here's number one. Here's number one. I want you to jot this down. Let this bless you. I'm going to give you these, and I got 25 minutes. Then we're going to be wrapping up, and I'm going to come back at it again next week. And we're going to walk through this whole series. You ready? All right, here it is. Be authentically you. Authentically you. Notice. Jesus, when he comes and they see him walking towards John the Baptist and he goes to be baptized by John the Baptist, he moves from the Jordan River being baptized by John the Baptist and he proceeds to the wilderness. He emerges from the wilderness and he begins ministry. Shows up at a wedding, Cana of Galilee, turns water to wine, moves from there and performs other miracles. When you walk and notice the ministry of Christ and notice not just the ministry, but let's look at the life of Christ. He was authentically him. He didn't change his identity to fit in with anybody. He was God in the flesh. He did not deviate his, 
from his identity to appease anybody or to blend in. So that lets us know right there, church, to build and maintain deep, substantive relationships, we must be sure of who we are. You can't build a relationship with somebody if you don't have confidence in who you are and know who you are. God didn't call you and make you to be fearfully and wonderfully made to interact with anybody to dummy yourself down to fit in. You don't have to change who you are to be somebody's friend. You don't have to change who you are to be in a relationship. You don't have to change who you are to build relationships. Be authentically you. We got to be true to ourselves. Be who you really are. Look at somebody and tell them, don't pretend. Be you. Come on, look at them and say, don't pretend, be you. Because guess what? Somebody actually said what? <laughs> That's cute. So, one, one of the biggest turnoffs in relationships is hypocrisy. Nobody wants a fake friend. So if nobody wants a fake friend, if it's a turn off to you, then why would you be somebody that you're not? I mean, we, we, people want to see the real Deacon Reed, Deacon Jean. They want to see the real, they don't want to see a fake Sister Jean on Sunday and then somebody else Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Because watch this, that, that's what they say, that's what they say about us. That we're, we're one way today and another way tomorrow. And they have a hard problem building relationships with people that go to church because they we are fake. And the truth of the matter is we're not really being who we are. Tell somebody, be you. So, if, if we're going to be build relationships, we have to be authentically us. So we have to avoid the spirit of hypocrisy. And that's when, when your words, watch this, I'm going to give you a definition that the Holy Spirit gave to me and I formulated it with Britannica and a little bit of Marion Webster and I combined it with Barry so now you have Barry and Webster and that was supposed to be a joke and some of y'all didn't laugh y'all you lack sense of humor you can't build relationships if you don't laugh you're all uptight all the time don't nobody want to be with somebody that's uptight Look at your neighbor and say, loosen up. <laughs> Hypocrisy is when your words and actions are absent from your moral standards and beliefs. And your behavior does not match up with the words that come out of your mouth. You say one thing, but do another. You, you speak one language, but you live another. We profess to be Christians, but we live like crazy. So we must be consistent in our words and our actions. They must line up. Let your yeas be yeas and your nays be nays. Y'all with me tonight? So we must, watch this, realize that discrepancies between our words and actions are serious warning signs to people that you're looking to build relationships with because they don't want to be in a relationship with somebody that they cannot trust. And the truth of the matter is, many of us have put on so many facades that we've lost the real us. Have you ever known 
somebody to tell so many lies that they forgot the truth. They done lied so much about the thing. They don't, nobody, nobody knows the truth no more. So guess what? If you don't like it on somebody else, if it's a deterrent from you building a relationship with somebody, what do you think they say about you? What do you think they say about us? So, so we, we our, our words and actions must line up. Make, make note of that, that my words have to line up with my actions. Because the truth of the matter is, and I'm going to say this, is, and I wrote, made a note of this, that most of the time people whose words and actions are not consistent, they don't know themselves. They don't know who they are. And that person is not a good candidate for a relationship. Having the integrity to back up what we say and what we do is vital. What you say, you must do. And what you do, you must say is vital. Character and integrity are important issues or important standards when it comes for a healthy relationship. Character and integrity. When you are looking to establish credit or build a buy, enter into a contractual agreement with uh, a mortgage company or when you're looking to enter into a contractual agreement with an auto finance company what do they do? They pull your credit because your credit is an example of your integrity. You're asking them to give you credit and they're looking at your financial integrity saying wait a minute you want me to give you credit and let you take my merchandise, I finance it, you pay on it once a month, but when I look at your integrity, uh, your integrity says that you don't pay your bills. So I can't build a relationship with you because you're asking me to go off of a pretense that's not true. The truth is you don't pay your bills, but you want me to give you something. The truth is with us, we don't love, but we want to be loved. We don't talk to people right, but we want people to talk right to us. We don't treat people right, but we want people to treat us right. What's your, what is your, matter of fact, ask yourself the question, what's your relational integrity? If we had to pull your relational report, Will people be able to speak well about you based on your relational your relational interactions, your relationship actions? Can people say, oh yeah, they're good for it. They're good to enter into another relationship. If we were to pull the references, you know how when you fill out a job application and you list the references and you got people that you, you want to speak on your behalf before this employer hires you, they're going to call your last employer and say, hey, this person and this this person is a candidate and they're looking to uh, get a job with us. I need to know how was their relationship with you? Oh, they was horrible. They was late every day. Well, if you was late on that job, I'm going to know you're going to be on time for this one. <laughs> help us, Jesus. Somebody say, help us, Jesus. So we, we talked about tonight that you have to be authentically you. Somebody say, I got to be me. So if I'm going to build a relationship with you, Cheryl, I don't want to see the fake Cheryl. I need to meet the real Cheryl. 
you know, you need to know the real Pastor Sam. Sasty, you got to know the real Pastor Sam. Sister Deacon Maybell, you got to know the real Pastor Sam like I got to know the re real Maybell. Give me the month, give me the Wednesday Maybell. Matter of fact, don't give me the Wednesday Maybell. Give me the Monday morning. You done been in church all day. You got to get up and go to work. It's 6 o'clock in the morning. I want to meet that Tasha. How does that Tasha talk? How does that Tasha respond to, to, to life circumstance? Show me that person. Show me that one. Because that's the real you. We come to church and we, we go on these dates with people. Don't act like y'all ain't never been on no dates. When you go on a date, what you do, Dara, you dress up, you put on your lashes, you put on your makeup, you put on your nice heels, she put on the right dress, because when she walk in, she want him, she want them to see her, right? She want them to see her. And when he see her, he's moved, he's moved. He's oh, he like, oh, she got it. She the one. But after three years, and he catch her one day, he show up at her house and she ain't got the hair done, ain't no lashes on. Uh, you know, got on her night, night, whatever, her shirt, and got on some jogging pants. He like, wait a minute. This not the real, this not this is not what you introduced me to. Not, but but we 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 show people the side of us that we want them to see. And they never see the authentic side of us. I'll never forget. She watching too, so it's all good. I got married. <laughs> Deacon Reed, like, that's my first lady you're talking about. I got married, and we were, you know, we were. I saw her with her church clothes on. But one day I went by her house and she didn't have on church clothes. She had on what we call lounge around. And I realized, hey, it's not in the makeup. It's not in what you can put on to make me like you. It's, a, it's the raw beauty of who you are. I'm able to stand and boldly say, and, and she watching, and I'm going to get some brownie points. So when I go back to Michigan for her graduation, she's going to say, babe, you said that about me. I'm going to say, girl, show enough I did publicly. <laughs> now what you, you going to do for me? <laughs> but but I, I tell my wife all the time, you know, my wife loves putting on makeup, lashes, and, and, she, and I tell her, I say, hey, your beauty is natural. When I was introduced to the natural Lakeisha, I loved her even the more. She posted a picture on Facebook today with her and her dad's jacket. She didn't have on an ounce of makeup. And I looked at her, I said, girl, you wearing that thing well today. <laughs> and that's what we have to understand. When it comes to building relationships, they don't want to see the fake you. They don't need to meet the made up you. You have to introduce them to the authentic you. Because for some people, to be honest, they can't handle the double-sidedness that we show people because it causes them to develop a distrust because they don't know what version of you they're going to get on any given day. So if you introduce them to the authentic you, they'll never have to worry about any other you. All right, I'm wrapping up. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right, so lastly, I want to tell you that if you're going to build strong relationships, Deacon Gene, it doesn't start with me. It starts with you. You must accept responsibility. For building a strong relationship you say Pastor Barry how do I how do I accept it the truth is Demetrius all positive traits that you look for in relationships must be first be cultivated within you 
So what you're looking for, you must possess. So you can't look for some honesty if you're not honest. You cannot look for consistency if you're not consistent. You follow what I'm saying? The characteristics that you are avoiding in others can sometimes be hidden in you. And if so, you must be quick to detox yourself from those traits because they will eventually be detrimental to your building new relationships. I need to say that one more time because what you're avoiding, you might have in you. you and you don't know you have it because there's something that is called blind spots. You ever drive and you know there's a part uh, of, of your side view that's not in your mirror and that's not in your window. It's in a blind spot. You can't see it. If you go see your ophthalmologist, your ophthalmologist will even tell you that even in your lens, in your, in your vision, there's blind spots in your vision that you just don't see. Other people may see them, but from your advantage, from your standpoint, you cannot see what's in your blind spot. And there may be some characteristics that you have that you are not even aware of because they are in what is called your blind spot, your mental blind spot, your emotional blind spot. And there are certain things that you cannot see about yourself that is hindering you uh, from building strong relationships. Things like pride and jealousy and envy and uh, hatred, they, they may be in you and you don't even realize it until a situation comes out. You open your mouth and say something and people around you look at you and say, did you just say what I think you said? Did you just do what I think you did? And you say, what? what I do? what I say? Because you don't even realize that you, you brought something out of your blind spot. These are thoughts and attitudes or actions you're probably not aware of. But guess what? Even when we don't see our blind spots, people around us see them. My wife tell me all the time, she say, Sam, you, you such and such. And I argue too for them. No, I ain't. Yes, you are. No, I ain't. She said, you don't see it. No, I don't see it. But it don't necessarily mean what she see is not there. Maxwell, y'all stand up. I need to use y'all for an example. Can y'all stand in the middle aisle for me? Pastor Lisa, you face that wall. No, uh, uh put y'all backs to each other. Put y'all backs to each other. Okay, all right. Now they, they in the same room with each other. Pastor Maxwell. Oh yeah, Pastor. Pastor, I'm gonna use y'all first name. Pastor Robert. What do you see in your peripheral right now? You see me. Okay, Pastor Lisa, what do you see behind you? You cannot see behind you. What can you see to your left? Okay, Pastor Robert, can you can 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 you see Mother Green right now? Can you see Mother Jim? But your wife said she could see Mother Green and Mother Jim. But y'all two standing together. Y'all in the same room. Can Pastor Lisa, he said he could see me out of his peripheral. Can you see me out of your peripheral? So y'all could see me out of your peripheral. But there were some things that he said he could see. There were some things she said she could see that you can't see. Right? 
Now, can you argue with her about what she saw? You can't argue with her about it. Why you can't? But but you can't see it. She can see it. You can't. So you can't debate about what she sees that you can't see because she's looking at it from a different view. That's all I need to point out. Thank you. In relationships, we're quick to argue about what we can't observe what we can't see but you can't you can't debate and argue about what somebody else tells you they see that you cannot see there are certain things about yourself you would never see but God would allow somebody else to see it and if they ever bring it to you in love that's the key word now. That is the key word. Speak. If you don't bring it in love, you might be in trouble. But but you must you must always, matter of fact, I always try to surround myself. I call them covenant brother, covenant, covenant friends that I'm in covenant with. I'm not just with you so you can celebrate me. But I have relationships with, with couples, me and my wife, men, women. Uh, I got covenant brothers. She got covenant sisters. We are connected with covenant, covenant couples. And, hey, I want you to have a relationship with me that if you see something wrong with me, don't let me be out here looking stupid. Tell me. If, I, if, if you hear me say something that's wrong, Tell me. You don't want relationships. They finally took that reverb off. Thank you. Bad walked in. You don't want a relationship that only shows you the good side of you. Healthy relationships should be able to tell you the good and the bad. And guess what? You received it. Can you imagine how Peter must have felt when Jesus told him after he gave that great revelation? that before the cock crow three times, you're going to deny me? Can you imagine what type of relationship that had to be for your friend that you've been rocking with for three years to look at you when you tell him you got his back and you're not going to let this happen? Jesus looked at Peter and said, get thee behind me, Satan. That had to be a strong, healthy relationship. Because if your friend call you Satan, I don't hear nobody talking back to me. I mean, what's going to be, you You going to, some hand gestures, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be some tension in the relationship. So when we're talking about building relationships, number one, you got to be authentically you, then number two, uh, you, you're, you're, you are, you set the pattern. What you're looking for in a relationship, you must first possess within yourself. You got to be authentically you. You can't be flaky. You can't be wishy-washy. You have to be consistent. Then, of course, we must work to give the very best of ourselves in relationships. If you're going to build healthy relationships, you got to work to give the very best of yourself. Nobody wants just half of you. You know, I had a friend one time uh, tell, tell me, I laugh. I'm a better friend to you than you are to me. I said, man, that ain't what I said. I said, please. I said, how you going to just watch your lips to say that? And it, and it put us in a, in a situation where I had to evaluate, like, wait a minute. Am, is he right? Am I not giving him all of me? Are, are we, am I taking more than I'm giving? Am I always on the receiving end of the wisdom 
of the friendship and never on the giving end of the friendship? Come to the conclusion, hey, he was right. But I had to listen. I had to hear him. And then I had to be willing to make, if I wanted the relationship, our, our brotherhood to stay strong, then I had to make the adjustments within myself like, hey, I can't just be a taker. I got to be a giver. I can't just look for him to be there when I need him, when I'm dealing with something and I need to talk about, but when he need to talk to me, I ain't never available, man. Call me back. You got to be the type of friend that you want people to be to you. All right? We're wrapping up tonight. But as I close, I'm going to encourage you to get off your island. You got to talk to more people and you got to have, you got to develop relationships with people that does not go to church. Don't be afraid. They're not going to, they're not going to contaminate you and have you in a club somewhere on a, doing a WAP. They ain't going to hurt you. <laughs> we act like if we go, if we fellowship with somebody, we're going to be on the bar stool drinking. No, you ain't going to be drinking tomorrow if you talk to somebody. I don't know what y'all said over here, but it sounds like it might be a little funny. But we must, if we're going to win the world, Christ, then we got to get off that island. We can't just fellowship with Mother Green, Mother Jimmy, Mother Snake. You know, that would be wonderful. But but we, we gotta get out of out of our circle. If the only people you talk to is the people that go to PTI and the people that have accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior, then this series is for you. If you have not made any new friends in the last year, because you said, I don't need no new friends, that's not even the Bible. He that hath friends must first show himself to be friendly. Jesus So if you don't have no friends, some people want to go where everybody knows the name, and they're always glad you came. People want to, when people see. Troubles are all the same. We, you want to go where everybody knows. <laughs> he going to say hallelujah on that. <laughs> like it's worship. <laughs> like Jamie Foxx did. I'm <laughs> singing the national anthem. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sister Stacy, yes, ma'am.
But guess what? By the end of this series, you may not be easy, but you're going to be you're going to be easy. Because this is the catch, Stacey, and I'm glad you said that because the title of the series is Building Strong Relationships and Learning How to End Bad Ones. Some of us, it's not that we're going to end every relationship and everybody's not going to be your best friend. What this series is going to also help you to do, which is what it helped me to do in 2015, it helped me move people around like checkers on a checkerboard. Because you you may be my ace boom coom today. But that may not be forever. You still my friend. I just gotta shift you to a different area. Because sometimes we let people stay in certain places too long and they stay past their time of purpose. So you gotta know when a person sees it. Is up in your life so you know, hey, we still call, we still talk, we still laugh, we still get along, but you're not where you were in my life. I have to learn how to recategorize people. And there's some people that you may have to eventually recategorize or shift or move because they're in a place that somebody else needs to get into. We're going to have some fun with this, y'all. It's going to be some laughter, and it may be some tears. Because for some of you, you got some people in the wrong place. And you're not getting the best benefit out of a relationship. Because you got the right person in the wrong place. Yes, ma'am. How do what? This is how you fix your, I'm glad you said that, and I'm going to close with this. The way you fix your blind spot is you ask your friend, somebody that you can trust, what do you see about me? Jesus asked the disciples, who do men say that I am? What do you see about me? Good or bad? Something I do uh, when I'm doing uh, marital counseling that I believe works out even outside of marital counseling. Me and my wife do this exercise all the time. LaQuisha, you know what that exercise is? Write down what? Exactly. Get with a friend, somebody you can trust, somebody that you know knows you, and say, hey, let's do an exercise. What's the things you like about me? And what's the things you don't like? And nine times out of ten, the things they don't like are things you didn't know you do. My wife quick to tell me, and I'm quick to tell her the things I like and the things I don't like. But guess what it does? It keeps me on edge. Because if I'm doing something that you don't like, and I keep doing it and you don't tell me, then you'll be walking around mad at me and angry and I won't have no idea why you mad. And it all along has been because I've been doing something that you don't like. So that's how you, that's how you find out what's in your blind spot. So that'll be your homework tonight. Go ask a good friend. Yes, Sister Snake. Ask a good friend. Say, Praline, I would like to know what you love about me and what you don't love. Yeah. And say, I'm going to listen no matter what you say. I'm just using them for an example because I know they're good friends. They're sisters in the Lord. But, like, say, for instance, I'll, I'll, I'll call and ask a friend. Say, hey, man, I'm doing this exercise, building relationships, and I'm doing this with, with a couple friends. What are some of the good traits I possess in the, as a friend, and what are some of the bad things that you notice about me that I need to work on? And you got 
got to be tough. Because they may say something that you may be like, you thought that about me? But you got to be, you got to be willing to accept it. But guess what it's going to do? It's going to help you improve who you are. Because at the end of the day, you want to be a better person. And remember, you don't want a friend that'll let you walk around with mud on your face and not tell you. Amen? All right, clap your hands and give Jesus a hand clap of praise. So what's your homework tonight? Ask a friend, because next week when we come, I'm going to ask you, did you do your homework? And I'm going to ask you, what did that friend bring out? What did that friend bring out? I'm going to ask First Lady to help me do mine and some other friends. Because I want to be a better me. And the most important relationship that I have above a friend is the one I have with my wife. So I'm going to ask her first because she's my best friend. Then I ask my other friends. But that's the relationship I need to be, you know, like 100. So you ask the persons that are close to you. Okay? And then bring it back next week. All right? And then you might want to hook up with somebody in the church that knows you and say, hey, let's work this exercise together. Because we're, we're all working to build strong relationships. And then watch this. You might want to ask somebody that just see you from afar off. Why you say that, Pastor? Because the people that, people that are not in your corner, not singing your praises, not in your face all the time, might really tell you the type of vibe you send off. Like, I need to ask a deacon genuine because he don't know me. He just knows what he sees on Sunday. But, hey, what type of vibe do you pick up when you see me as a man moving? And I have to take it, be willing to receive it so I can make the necessary adjustments. Mother Snake. No, <laughs> no, because you're always changing. You're constantly evolving. First lady is not the same 15-year-old that I took to the Luther Vandross concert in 1993. She's not. She's a whole different woman. I was able to take her there and take her to Nikki's Pizza, and she was happy. Won't happen again. the price tag that went up. <laughs> As it should. Because we all change with time. You're not the person you were 20 years ago. You're, you have changed. Your personality has changed. I know I'm not the same. I will hope I'm not the same because if I was the same, then y'all wouldn't be able to deal with it. And that's understandable, but watch this, because you change, you, we disassociate ourselves with those that we're supposed to reach back and strengthen. So we cut off relationships that we should literally just change our position in. I'll talk about it more. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive into it. All right, let's get ready to give so we could, uh, so we could get ready to go. I do want to announce that uh, starting this coming Sunday, uh, we will make sure that we are, uh, uh, not, I don't want to use the word advertise, but giving people an opportunity.
opportunity to give if you want to give towards a benevolent uh, benevolent fund. We're going to start our benevolent fund back so that when people are in need, they can come to the church and we'll have a benevolent fund and our deacons will oversee it along with our finance team. And uh, there'll be a certain criteria that is uh, has to be met, but we want to make sure that if a member is in need or someone in our church is in need, they could come to the church and obtain help. Amen? Amen. So I just wanted to put that announcement out there, and uh, we'll we'll look and see how we'll at, at, uh, underwrite those expenses. But our, our benevolent can also be given on Wednesday night. So if you want to donate on Wednesday night towards benevolent, you can. And I say always give something towards benevolent because you never know if it's going to be you on hard time. Amen. All right. So, come on, Deacon Gene, Elder Gene. No, that Deacon Gene. I'm thinking Shaw. I'm looking at Gene and Shaw walking. Don't forget about Friday night. We will be at a Community Church of God for the uh, workshop. We'll be there Friday night at seven, and then we'll be here Saturday at what time, Dara? What time? 12, Dara figuring it out. She's like, wow. We'll be here at 12. I think the family hour is at 12. The wake is at 12. And the funeral service starts at 1. From my understanding, they're saying that this church, that the family is so big that we're going to have to have chairs and people standing outside under a tent. Uh, they said that they're expecting over three to 400 people for this homegoing celebration. This woman was well loved and well known in the community. So let's be here. Uh, if, the, if there's going to be that many people, we're going to need ushers and hospitality and every hand on deck so that we can maneuver and if we need to put those tents up. We had Sunday, we have to put those tents up out there so people could sit outside and it'll be 90 Saturday so they'll be sitting outside able to hear the service but won't be able to come into the building to see it because we do have a maximum capacity that we don't want to uh, put our church in jeopardy of being fined for a funeral. Amen? All right, then, but Saturday morning, if you want to, you can still go by the Community Church of God for the morning session, which starts, I believe, at 9 a.m. So be there first and then come here. And uh, once you come here, make sure you got your work clothes on because we're going to be serving. And that's an opportunity that I always look at to build relationships when uh, throw out the lifeline and get souls saved. I believe every time somebody walks in here, it's an opportunity to get a soul saved, whether it's a wedding, a funeral, a meeting, whatever. So with that many people being here, I'm very sure that somebody in here is going to be an unbeliever that's going to need to get to know Jesus Christ. So if you pray for that family, that uh, God will use this as an opportunity to bring them into the family of faith. Amen? All right. Uh, having said that, I think that's it. Let's let's get ready to give. I'm ready to give so we could go and move on. All right? Let's do that. Let's stand. Come from where you are. You go to the back. Use, uh, uh, you know, our ways of giving. We've got online. We've got text to give. We've got cash out. We've got checks. And we have Givelify. Amen. Electronic giving is always the way to go because that's how I do it. Amen. That's how I do it. Did you know that you can set up reoccurring giving? You can set it up in Givelify where it just come out monthly or come out biweekly. So if those of you that are interested in reoccurring giving, you could do that. That's what we're going to start calling no hassle giving. Amen. You can give your covenant partners monthly. Just set it up to be reoccurring and your money will just automatically come out Monday. But you got to make sure the money's in there. Amen. Amen. If you're going to set up reoccurring giving, make sure the money is in there. All right. LaQuisha is going to give us a tutorial on how to set up reoccurring giving. But I know in Givelify, you can set up reoccurring giving. What other, what other app allows us to do that, LaQuisha? PayPal allows you to set up reoccurring giving. So I believe the church's, the church's website is connected through PayPal, correct? So you can set up reoccurring giving in, in a PayPal account. 
and you can set a reoccurring giving in Givelify. Uh, you might can do it in Cash App. I have to see. Uh, I know you can do it in Zelle, uh, which we now have Zelle. But reoccurring giving is what we call no hassle giving. You ain't even got to worry about it. It's going to automatically come. As soon as your payroll hits, you can just make sure that tithe comes. And that's what you really call putting God first when you do it like that. That's a level of faith that I tell you that I believe God honors. All right. So once again, I want to thank everybody. Sunday was a great success. Our community ministry and our ministry fair was great on Sunday. Hats off to them, to the Maxwells. Amen. And also want to announce that I want you to receive our mother's ministry. Mother Green and Mother Gemma and Mother Snake and Mother uh, Mother Capo and uh, Mother Rodent. Uh, those women of God uh, have been set aside. And, uh, they are the mothers of Praise Tabernacle. They're the women that have the Holy Ghost. But they're also women that God has given wisdom to that we all must be willing and receptive to when God uses them to come and speak to us, whatever the case may be, corporately or individually. They may pull you to the side. Uh, whatever it is, God uses them to speak to you. I pray that you receive it in love uh, and that you receive them as women of wisdom. I don't believe that they've lived this long by mere coincidence or happenstance that God has sanctified them for this purpose by mere happenstance, but he's done it so that we can all stay on the straight and narrow. I wish I had a talk back, church. Amen. Stay on the straight and narrow. So I grew up in a church where the mothers were able to come to us and advise us. Mothers sometimes will come and tell you when you're out of order. And if you're out of order, just receive it and get in order. You know, but they must, they're going to speak it in love that they will do. But I want you to be respectful and to receive it in the Holy Ghost. Amen? All right. So, Lord, we thank you for this time that we've shared together in your presence. Lord, we love you. We know that you mean for us to have relationships because if you didn't, you would not have told us to love our neighbor as ourselves. Mm. That lets us know that you want us to interact one with another. So help us to do that, Father. Help us to apply what was taught to us tonight so that we could build strong relationships as you so please for us to do. And we'll be so careful. To give your name, the honor, and the glory. Bless those that are here. Bless those that could not make it. Those that are not feeling well in their bodies. And their bodies are filled with sickness. Father, we pray healing. Uh, you're still able to heal the common cold. Uh, you've got power over pneumonia and sinus infections. And lack of breathing. So, so touch them now. We're still praying for all those that are bereaved. Sister Millie and Sister Maybell, touch them now. Father, even family members I got back at home, touch them that have lost loved ones. Comfort them as only you can. And Father, you do that, we're going to rise and give you the glory and the praise that your name is due. Until we meet back into this place on Sunday morning, we're going to enter your gates with thanksgiving. And we're going to enter your courts with praise. We're not going to be quiet. We're going to we're going to do what your word says for us to do, and minister to our hearts as it relates to worship. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.